Okay, welcome back guys to another video from CXC Mad Tutor. So in this video, we'll be looking at the Regents Algebra 1 Common Core August 2019 past paper. And we'll be looking at questions 1 to 6. Uh, that's questions 1 to 6 from the Regents Algebra 1 Common Core August 2019 past paper. All right, so the first question here, um, Brian's hockey team is purchasing jerseys. Um, the company charges $250 for a one-time setup fee, okay? And $23 for each jersey printed, or each printed jersey. Which expression represents the total cost of X number of jerseys um, for the team, all right? So first of all, this is actually a linear model, all right, that follows um, the equation y equal to mx plus c, and because it's an because it's an an expression and not an equation, I'm going to um, sorry there, I'm going to remove the y equal to, all right, because remember an expression does not have an equal sign, all right, so. As you can see that um, the M here, which is your gradient or your slope, represents the $23 for each printed jersey, all right? So it'd be 23 multiplied by X. X represents the number of jerseys um, for the team, all right? And this plus C here represents a fixed amount, the fixed cost, the one-time setup fee, which is $250, all right? So X represents the number of um, jerseys. That's what's changing the variable, all right? And the 22 represents the it costs for each printed um, jersey, all right? And this is the one-time setup fee, all right? So this is the expression here, which is um, choice three um, for question number one, all right? Okay, so let's move on to question number two. Okay, it said, um, which table represents a function? So remember a function represents a function. So remember a function is a, a relation that has one output, okay? So these are different tables here that represent um, different relations and it asks me which one of these relations, which one of these tables represents a function, all right? <coughs> Excuse me. So um, if you're not comfortable uh, with tables, you know, sort of visualizing what's going on using a table, what you can do, you can convert these tables here to what you call a mapping diagram. All right, so for number one, I'm going to use a mapping diagram because it's probably easier for you to see uh, whether or not it's a function or not. All right. So remember, for the mapping diagram, you have two ovals here, and so the, the first oval represents your x values, input values, or your domain, and the second overall represents your y values, or the, the output, or the range, all right? So when, um, when x equal to 2, 2 is mapped onto negative 3, and we have 3 is mapped onto 0, and we have 4 is mapped onto negative 3, and we have 2, is map onto one, all right? So as you can see that this relation is actually a one-to-many relation. So we have one um, input um, is mapped to two different output. All right? So two, for example, is map onto negative three and is also map onto one. So this is a one-to-many, one to many, one, um, to many relation All right, so this is not a function. This is not a function. Because I remember I said before, for it to be a function, you have to have one, one output. All right, you can't have many. So this over here has to be a one. 
right? They can have many to one, one to one, and so forth. But as long as you have one output, then it is a, it is a function. If you have more than one output, it's not a function. So this is not a function. It is a relation, but it's not a function, all right? All right, so let's move on to number two here, all right? So use a mapping diagram again of x, y, and we see that one is mapped onto two. One again is mapped onto three. One is mapped onto four. One is mapped onto five, all right? So as you can see, definitely this is a one to many again. This is one to many, which is not a function. This is not a function. Okay. Not a function. All right, so this is out. This is out. Let's look at three. We have X and Y. So we have negative three is map onto zero. Negative two is map onto one. Negative three is map onto two. And we have two is map onto three. Again, this is a one to many, one to many. So you have negative three is map onto zero and negative three is map onto two. So this is a one to many, one to many relation, which is not a function, not a function. All right. So clearly it has to be choice four, but let's just show you exactly why choice four is a, a function. So let that look at choice four here. X, Y. So you have negative two is map onto negative four. You have zero is map onto two. You have two is map onto four. And you have four is map onto six. So as you can see, this is a one to one. One to one relation which is a function. So this is a function, all right? Because you have one output, all right? Regardless of what the input is, you have one output, all right? And that's why it is a function. So the answer for question two is choice four, all right? Okay, so let's move on to question number three. Uh, which expression is equivalent to two open bracket x squared minus one uh, close bracket plus three x multiplied by x minus four um, close bracket? All right. <coughs> Sorry. So having a bad cough here. Um, so all right. So we can ex distribute this using the um, distributive property. Okay. And so we have um, two times, so we have two multiplied by x squared minus one plus three x multiplied by x minus four. All right, so we have two times x squared is two x squared. All right. And two times negative one is negative two plus three times, three x times x is three x squared and three x times um, negative four is negative 12 X, all right? And if you combine your two X square and your three X square, that's gonna give us five X square, right? Two X square plus three X square gives us five X square. And then we have our negative 12 X and our negative two, all right? So as you can see that um, question three would be um, choice four. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to question number four. Um, the value of x that satisfies the equation. Of course, you can solve this equation algebraically and solve and, and find for, find the value for x or you can substitute these different values here into the equation um, you know, using the calculator to see which, 
which one of these values will make the, the left hand side equal to the right hand side. But I'm, I'm just going to solve it algebraically just for you guys to see how you can um, solve this equation here. All right. Okay, um, so here we have uh, an equation here. Well, the first thing I will do here um, is to cross multiply, all right? <coughs> all right? Or I could multiply the entire equation by the LCM to get rid of the fractions. That's, an, that's another option again, all right? So I could, for example, I could multiply the entire equation by uh, 15 because the LCM, the lowest common multiple between three and 15 is 15, all right? And if I do that, for example, I multiply the entire equation by 15. Then if I take 3 and 3, 1, 3 and 15 goes 5 times, 5 times 4 is 20. Right? That's equal to 15 and 15, 1, and 1 times x plus 10 is x plus 10. All right? And then I can just solve for x here by subtracting um, 10 from both sides of the equation. All right? And you will see that um, if I do that, then I will get 20 minus 10 is 10 is equal to x, All right? And you'll see that question four, the answer is choice three. So x is equal to 10, all right? So that's one way of solving the equation by just by multiplying the equation by the LCM. Um, the other way you can do it is, as I said before, you could just cross multiply here. All right, so three multiplied by x plus 10 is equal to 50 multiplied by four, which is uh, 60. And I distribute here, three times x is three x, and three times 10 is 30 is equal to 60. I subtract 30 from both sides. All right, that's gonna give me three X is equal to 30. I divide both sides by three. X is equal to 30 divided by three, which is 10. All right, so you can see that question four, the answer is choice three. All right, all right, let's move on to question number five. All right, um, Josh graphed the function f of x is equal to negative three open bracket x minus one close bracket square plus two. And he then graphed the function g of x is equal to negative three um, x minus one square minus five on the same coordinate plane. The vertex of g of x is, all right, so the best way to approach this question is actually do a quick sketch of the graph. And uh, these are actually parabolas. All right, and this one here has a vertex of, the vertex for f of x, the f of x vertex is, um, the vertex will be positive one comma two, and the vertex of g of x is gonna be, um, is gonna be one comma negative five. All right, so let's plot these vertices here on the, on the, the graph, so one, two, three, four, this is x-axis, this is my y-axis, one, two, three, four, um, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative one, negative two, negative three, okay. So for the vertex of f of x, it's gonna be at one and two. So x is one, y is two, right there, and and the vertex with g of x, when x is one, y is negative five, all right, down here, all right? So, um, looking at your answer choices here, you can see that the answer of a question five is actually choice one, which is seven units below f of x. So, they, so this is, remember, this was the, um, the vertex for g, and this was the vertex for the g of x. 
and this is the vertex for f of x. All right, and as you can see, this this g of x here vertex is actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units below the vertex of f of x. All right, so g of x is seven units below the vertex of f of, the vertex of f of x, and that's why choice one is the answer for question number five. All right. Okay, so let's move on to question number six. <coughs> okay, question six. A survey was given to 12 um, grade students of West High School to determine the location for the senior class trip. The results are shown in the table below. All right. So these are the different locations, at Niagara Falls, Durian Lake, and New York City. All right, and these are the boys and these are the girls. All right, so to the nearest percent, what percent of the boys chose Niagara Falls? Be, very, be careful with um, this, this question here. Um, because a lot of you have attempted to look at Niagara Falls and just add up these numbers here, all right? So, for example, you get 56 over what, 127. This is wrong. Okay, read the question carefully. Uh, what percent of the boys, which means the total number of boys in the survey? Okay, so the total number of boys in the survey is this. Okay, 56 for Niagara Falls, 74 for Durand Lake, and um. 103 for New York City, all right? So the question one, what percent of the boys chose Niagara Falls? All right, so you add up the number of boys, all right? If you add it up using a calculator, all right, 56 plus 74 plus 103 plus 74 plus 103, it's going to give you 233 boys um, in the survey. And the question is, what percent of these 253 boys um, chose Niagara Falls? All right. So it's going to be 56 that chose Niagara Falls out, out of the total number of boys, all right, multiplied by 100%. All right. And, and to the nearest percent, the answer will be choice two. Okay. Choice two. All right, so the answer for question six is choice two. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to the video. Um, also, please consider clicking the notification button so that you can be notified of future videos. All right, okay, that's it. Thanks again. Thanks again for watching.